Hey, uh, it's Nat. Let's take a look now at what's been making news. The Pacific Island nation of Vanuatu is dealing with the effects of a monster storm. Cyclone Harold had already caused heaps of damage in the Solomon Islands, and when it hit Vanuatu, it was a Category 5 storm, which is the strongest they can get. Here's Kale with more. When you see how big it is from space, it's not hard to imagine how scary this cyclone must have been on the ground. Cyclone Harold brought winds of more than 230 k's per hour, enough to destroy buildings and rip out a stack of telephone towers. This has knocked out communication for a lot of the island, so it's still really unclear just how much damage has been done. Just a few days ago, Vanuatu was preparing for COVID-19. Even though no cases are here, there was already a state of emergency and people were social distancing. But now that can't happen. And there are worries it could make it harder to get aid for the country. But with more extreme weather on the way, experts say this nation is gonna need a lot of help to rebuild. The UK's Prime Minister is now in intensive care after his COVID-19 symptoms got worse. Boris Johnson tested positive to the virus nearly two weeks ago, and he was taken to hospital on Sunday when his symptoms didn't go away. He sent out tweets yesterday saying he was in good spirits and thanking hospital workers. But he's not well enough to work, and the UK's Foreign Secretary will do the job for now. Scientists say the Great Barrier Reef is in a bad way after a massive bleaching event. They've just done a big survey and found, for the first time, there's bleaching all the way from the north to the south. Bleaching happens when the water gets too warm and the colourful algae that lives on coral disappears. It turns white and if it goes on for too long, it can die. So they're really hoping that doesn't happen. Now to a question I bet a lot of you are asking. What's going on with school next term? Well, today Australia's education ministers had a big meeting to try and figure out what to do, while Victoria's decided its classes are moving online. Here's Leela. Yeah, I know. It's been a really weird time for all you school students out there. You know, there are just so many unanswered questions just up in the air that it's hard to, you know, um, just like stay positive when you just don't know what's going to happen. Well, that's what state governments around the country are trying to figure out right now. The Federal Education Minister has said that for most students, Term 2 will be online. And this morning, Victoria made that official. When I found out school would be online, I was shocked because I did not think it would get that bad. I felt worried but keen to see what it would be like. I feel like it's a good thing because it gives kids the opportunity to learn from home. Good because I can work in my PJs. Also a bad thing because kids can't interact physically with their friends and teachers. The Victorian government says it's going to make sure students get the equipment they need to work from home, including computers and internet access. But it's also going to keep schools open for students that absolutely have to go. For example, kids whose parents have an essential job and can't supervise them. For everyone else, they say staying at home is the best way to slow the spread of COVID-19. Meanwhile, government ministers have agreed that all Year 12 students will have the chance to finish this year. And while everyone's still figuring out exactly how it will all work, hopefully all of you will have your questions answered soon. Finally, we're all staying inside a lot more these days, which means when we do get out, it can be a lot more exciting. I like to call this segment Out and About. More than 300,000 people have joined the Facebook group Bin Isolation Outing, which features some hilarious dress-ups. Here are some of my favourites. Meanwhile, this porcupine at Oregon Zoo is getting out and about with her keeper. There aren't any human visitors right now, which makes it a perfect time for the animals, like Nolene here, to get some exercise and meet the neighbours. And here's a very English celebration of not getting out with a cat. England need one to win. Adrian from England has used his time inside and his pet to create Ben Stokes' famous Ashes innings. And in comes Pat Cummins from the far end. He bowls to Stokes, who hammers it for four! Wow, that was much easier to watch with a cat. Well, that's all we've got time for today, but we'll be back again tomorrow. You know the drill. See you then.